Is body cam actually a horror game that can cause real life dread? Most people see body cam as a hyper realistic multiplayer FPS, but is that all there is to it? Or has it crossed the line, making it feel more like a horror game than anything else? Well, when you think about it, a first person shooter, what is it the first thing that comes to mind? Fast paced action, explosive set pieces, and strategic gunfights, right? But what if a game takes realism so seriously that it starts to blur the line between virtual experience and real life dread? That's the question Bodycam is forcing us to grapple with. From the moment Bodycam was announced, it was clear that this game was something different. The idea of stepping into the shoes of a SWAT officer, seeing the world through the grainy, often disorienting lens of a body camera, was compelling. The trailers hinted at a level of immersion that we hadn't seen before where every decision and every action could have life or death consequences. But as players finally got their hands on the game, they discovered something unexpected. Body cam wasn't just a tactical shooter, it was something much darker, something that felt more like a psychological thriller or even a horror game. Let's take a step back. When body cam first hit the scene, the gaming community was buzzing with anticipation. The promise of hyper-realistic gameplay grounded in the gritty reality of police operations had everyone talking. The developers had clearly put a lot of effort into creating an experience that was as authentic as possible, from the way the weapons handled to the unpredictable behavior of the AI enemies. But as impressive as the game's technical achievements were, they also brought an unintended consequence, an overwhelming sense of tension and fear. You see, realism in games isn't just about graphics or physics, it's about how a game makes you feel. And body cam? It makes you feel tense, on edge, like something is always lurking just out of sight. The game's atmosphere is suffocatingly intense, with every mission feeling like a descent into the unknown. Instead of the usual adrenaline rush you get from an FPS, body cam delivers a slow burn sense of dread that creeps up on you, making your heart race not from the action, but from the anticipation of what might happen next. But why does body cam feel so different from other shooters? Part of it lies in its approach to realism. Most FPS games, even the most realistic ones, still maintain a certain level of the attachment. The action is fast and often exaggerated, designed to be thrilling rather than terrifying, but body cam strips all that away. The game's perspective through the lens of a body camera makes everything feel more intimate, more immediate. You're not just controlling a character, you're seeing the world through their eyes, and that makes every encounter, every firefight, feel personal. Then there's the sound design. Bodycam's audio is a masterclass in creating tension. The muffled thud of your footsteps, the distant echo of gunfire, the way every creak and groan in the environment sets your nerves on edge, it all combines to create an atmosphere that's genuinely unnerving. It's the kind of sound design you'd expect in a horror game not an FPS, and that's exactly why it works so well. But it's not just about the atmosphere. The gameplay itself is designed to keep you on edge. Body cam isn't about running and gunning your way through waves of enemies. It's about careful planning, tactical decisions, and the constant awareness that one wrong move could be your last. The game forces you to slow down, to think about every action, and that's where the real tension comes from. It's not just about surviving the firefight. It's about surviving the fear that grips you before, during, and after each encounter. So is body cam a horror game in disguise? Well, it certainly has all the elements of one. The game's use of lighting, sound design, and pacing create a sense of dread that you wouldn't expect from a typical FPS. The slow methodical gameplay, the realistic depiction of violence, the way the game never lets you feel truly safe, it all adds up to an experience that's as much about psychological horror as it is about tactical shooting. But is this a bad thing? Well, not necessarily. For some players, this level of immersion is exactly what they're looking for. Body cam doesn't just offer a challenge in terms of gameplay, it challenges your nerves, your instincts, and your ability to keep cool under pressure. It's a game that doesn't just ask you to survive. It makes you feel the weight of survival. Every mission feels like a test, not just of your gaming skills, but of your ability to handle the tension and stress that comes with it. However, this level of realism isn't for everyone. Some players find it overwhelming, even off-putting. Bodycam's commitment to authenticity can make it feel less like a game and more like a psychological test. There's a fine line between realism that enhances gameplay and realism that becomes oppressive, and Bodycam walks that line with every mission. 
But let's be clear, body cam isn't just about fear. It's also a masterclass in design and innovation. The game's mechanics are finely tuned to create an experience that's both challenging and rewarding. Every decision you make has real consequences and every victory feels earned. It's this blend of realism and gameplay that sets body cam apart from other shooters. When comparing body cam to other FPS titles, the difference is stark. Games like Call of Duty and Battlefield deliver cinematic, fast-paced action, while body cam slows things down, forcing you to think, to plan, and to feel every moment. It's not just about who's the fastest shot, it's about who can keep it cool when everything goes sideways. The game encourages you to approach each mission with caution, to think like a real SWAT officer, and to understand that every choice you make has a ripple effect on the outcome. And that's where body cam score truly lies. It's not in jump scares or monsters, it's in the quiet moments, the tension, the fear of the unknown. It's in the way the game makes you question every move, every sound, every shadow. It's a horror that's rooted in reality. And that's what makes it so powerful. The fear isn't just of what's on the screen, it's the fear of the consequences of your action, the fear of making the wrong decision in a split second, the fear of what might happen if you let your guard down. But beyond that fear, Bodycam also offers a unique perspective on the FPS genre. It challenges our expectations of what a shooter can be. It's not just about reflexes and accuracy, it's about strategy, patience, and the ability to think under pressure. The game forces you to confront the realities of violence and the psychological toll it can take, both on your character and on you as a player. In a way, Bodycam is a reflection of the times we live in. It's a game that doesn't shy away from the harsh realities of the world it portrays. It asks difficult questions about violence, morality, and the human cost of the decisions we make. It's a game that makes you think, not just about the gameplay, but about the world we live in and the impact that games can have on our perception of reality. So, is Body Camp too realistic? Maybe, but that's also what makes it one of the most compelling games in recent memory. It's not just another FPS, it's a game that makes you feel something, something that lingers long after you've put down the controller. It's a game that challenges you, not just in terms of gameplay, but in terms of your ability to handle the psychological and emotional weight it brings. But what do you think? Has Body Camp pushed the boundaries of realism too far, or is it exactly what the game needed? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please check out any of my other content as I would greatly appreciate it. But that's it for